Namaste. So, you want to learn Jyotish, do you? <laughs> oh boy. As soon as you look into it, you'll find out what a bottomless subject it is. So, all we can do is kind of point you in the right direction <laughs> and give you some encouragement and um, point you at some tools and let you go. Um, you have to find your own way because everyone has a different approach, a unique style, and a context. Now, this is very important. Context determines meaning. For example, the definition of a word in one sentence is going to be different from its definition in another sentence. If I say, Jack and Jill went up the hill, the definition of up is different from if I say, fill up the tank with gas, isn't it? What determines the meaning? The context. In one case, I'm talking about traveling upward to a higher elevation. And in another case, I'm talking about um, filling something to a state of completion or fullness. And guess what? There are about 20-something different definitions for the word up. They all depend on the context. So in the same way, the readings that you find in a person's chart are going to look different depending on the context that you create. Now, of course, the first chart that you should do and the one that you should work on the most is your own. You're going to be your own best client. <laughs> you should because this will give you the experience from the inside of what it's like to live in a body with these particular readings, these particular configurations of planets. So before we get to the mechanics, the, the details of how you cast a chart and so on, I want to talk about the meaning. I want to talk about the context that you create. Why are you doing this chart? Most people will say, I want to know what's going to happen. But I would advise you that predictions are maybe 10% of why you should do your chart. The other 90% is to see your spiritual situation and to understand your possibilities of action. And of course, it all depends on your state of consciousness and spiritual advancement. I'm going to put up the good old chart. <laughs> so there are four basic levels of spiritual advancement. And you are doing your own chart, so you're doing it for someone on the same level as you. And you can profitably do a chart for someone on the same or a lower level of spiritual advancement. But if you try to interpret the chart of someone who's ahead of you, who's on a higher level of consciousness, it'll be a disaster. <laughs> you'll get it completely wrong. So let me use an example from my own chart. Here's my chart. And you see I have K2 in the ninth house in Scorpio with Jupiter. So if we look up the typical readings for K2 in the ninth house in Scorpio, we're going to find things like doesn't follow the scriptures, uh, 
tends to deconstruct or atomize spiritual teachings. Um, and, and these are presented as a bad thing. But on the other hand, there are interpretations of this same position that say, well, this is an indicator of enlightenment. So you see, it depends on your position in the path of spiritual advancement and in relation to the person you're doing the chart for. If you're doing a chart for someone who is on a higher level than you are, then you'll certainly get it wrong because you'll be relying on readings that give an external context. But if you are on the same level or higher, you'll be able to realize the internal context. So yes, I don't follow the scriptures uh, word for word. I interpret the scriptures as metaphors because I know very clearly that all words are simply metaphors because the actual spiritual situation cannot be described in words. So the Buddha also knew this, and he talked about similes, which is basically the same thing as a metaphor. It's a way of describing something that's hard to describe by giving an example. Like, human life is like a drop of water on a lotus leaf. See, because there are parallels between the two situations. Human life, obviously, is not a drop of water. <laughs> but the drop of water shares many qualities with the human life. And the same is true of all astrological readings. They have to be interpreted according to the person's position and status on the path. So while it's true that for example, I don't follow all the rituals and stuff in the scriptures strictly. On the other hand, I have seen how they are metaphors for states of consciousness and go into work with the states of consciousness directly. So I can do that because I've already been through those earlier lessons. And if you've been following this channel for any length of time, or if you download our uh, Dharmasar video guide, which is linked in the video description here, you'll see that there are many stages on the path and there are many things that are prerequisites. Without knowing which, you will not be able to ascertain your position. So this is absolutely necessary before you begin any serious study of Jyotish. What to speak of doing charts for others. So doing your own chart should help you to find your position, your status, your level of realization, and should help you understand where others are on this same journey. And then you can interpret their chart in the light of these insights. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask me to do their chart. And the short answer is no, thank you. <laughs> and the long answer is I don't know you very well. And because I don't know you, it's going to be hard for me to interpret the readings appropriately to your stage on the path. Just like I just said, for example, if you do somebody's chart, you have to be able to place them on the path in order to interpret properly. So in the same way, if I do your chart and I don't know you well enough, to understand where you are. I could easily misinterpret something and that could give you a completely wrong idea and hold back your progress on the path. So I don't want to do that. 
In my experience working with various chart readings and astrologers, only one of them actually got where I was at on the path. And he's in India, and he doesn't do online readings exactly because of this. Because when you're working with someone over the internet, you don't know who they are. You don't know what their experiences are, what their background is, what they've gone through in their life, what's motivating them. I mean, yeah, there's a certain amount that you can glean from the chart itself. But let me tell you something about these charts. Compared to the amount of information that is an actual human being, the chart is very sparse. Even with all the books, I mean, there are hundreds of books on Jyotish, all the interpretations, going back to Parashara, who is generally considered the founder of Jyotish. Even with all that information, you will never get a complete picture. You're always going to be, for, to a certain degree, guessing. And because of that, you can never make a prediction with 100% certainty. Let me give you an example from science. Quantum mechanics can predict the behavior of an aggregate of a large number of atoms or atomic particles. For example, if I have uh, some radium, like in a watch dial. Remember radium watch dials? This is before electric watches that lit up. <laughs> you cannot predict when a particular atom is going to decay. But you can predict, given a large sample of radium atoms, approximately how many will decay in a given span of time using statistics. Statistics is a fancy word for we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know what inspires a particular atom to go through atomic decay at a certain time. All we can do is take a large aggregate, a big sample, and observe it and say, well, generally speaking, approximately such and such a percent of these atoms will decay in a given span of time. And that's why we have terms like half-life. The length of time that it takes half the atoms in a particular sample to decay. So in the same way, depending on the context that we create, our readings will be more or less accurate. That's why you should start with your own chart. You have more information about you than anybody else in the universe. So you will be able to determine right away, or at least after some thought, whether a particular reading is appropriate. So taking what you know about yourself and your level on the chart of the path, you can interpret the readings to be appropriate for your particular situation and your particular status of life, your advancement on the path. So this enables you to create a context in which the readings are meaningful. Otherwise, you're basically just guessing with a very low probability, <laughs> statistical chance of success. And this is why most readings fail. And next time, we'll start to get into the mechanics of actually casting and interpreting a chart. And until then, Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.